Today, we're gonna to be talking about light. How much light does your plant need to survive and thrive? Knowing the right amount of light is crucial to ensuring that your plants remain happy and continue to thrive in your collection. Make sure you stay until the end because I am gonna be giving you two free tools to understand your plant's lighting requirements and to test the amount of light your plant gets. I'm also gonna go through my setup over here and show you exactly how much light each plant receives. Now let's start with how exactly you measure light and understanding what that means. Now there are two scales to do this. You can either measure your light in terms of lumens or in terms of foot candles. Now for the purpose of today's video, I am gonna be using foot candles just because I find it's a little bit easier to understand. And we're gonna start with low light plants. Now low light plants are plants that require between 50 and 100 lumens of light to survive. Now the key word here is to survive, just to ensure that they don't die. This is pretty much your plant living in a shaded area that will get you about 50 to 100 lumens. So it's not terribly bright at all. Some examples of some low light plants include your Sansevieria, so that's your snake plants. ZZ plants are notorious low light plants and Aglaonemas, also known as your Chinese evergreen. Now these plants can survive in partially shaded area or really pulled back away from a window. These plants could also survive in a low level of artificial lighting. Medium light plants on the other hand require between 100 and about 500 lumens of light to survive. Now this is an area where most of our common household plants sort of thrive in. So we're talking about our philodendrons, our anthuriums, spider plants and dracaenas. These are very popular plants that do well in medium light, also known as bright indirect light. So when you hear that term, you're really looking at that medium light situation. Now these plants can tolerate some direct light, but they don't wanna be exposed to that too much because that can result in damaged leaves. Highlight plants, exactly as the name suggests, require a lot more light to survive. So you're looking at that range between around 500 to over a thousand foot candles of light per day. Plants that really enjoy high light environments are of course your cacti and succulents, your bird of paradise and your fig trees. So your fiddle leaf trees, your rubber trees, those plants really, really thrive in a high light environment. And anything less than that, you'll find that a plant really, really suffers. So understanding what kind of light your plant really enjoys is really important to know in your plant care journey. Now, if you find yourself giving your plant less light than the recommended amount, what you want to do is ensure that you're not watering them too much. Because what that means is that it can lead to root rot. If your plant is photosynthesizing less, it means that it's not using up that water and the nutrients as quickly as you're watering it. Now that can lead to a really damp soil environment and that can promote bacteria and fungi growth and that can really, really damage the health of your plant. In any of these categories, whether that be your low light, medium light or high light plant, you wanna make sure that your plant is getting that amount of light for a minimum of two hours a day. Now, some plants can do less, others require a lot more. So for example, your medium and your high light plants, they wanna be exposed to that light a little bit longer. So medium, I would say between two to three hours. And for your high light plants, they do require that three to four, maybe even more light. So if you're lucky enough to be living in a, in a country or in a space that gets lots and lots of light, then definitely make sure that your plant is making the most use of that. Something else that you might need to do is just keep an eye on your plants in terms of how much light that they're getting. Some plants, when they're exposed to too much light, it can actually damage the leaves. So you wanna make sure that you're adjusting and keeping an eye on it to make sure that it's not causing too much damage. Also, if you're taking a plant from a low light environment to a high light environment, you wanna make sure that that transition is as smooth as possible because taking a plant that is used to growing in that lower light environment and blasting them with loads of light can actually cause shock and can actually cause the leaves to really suffer and make it more susceptible to burning. So in order to understand what kind of lighting requirement your plant needs, I suggest you looking at the houseplantjournal.com. It's a fantastic website that has a table that defines the genus or the species of plant 
um, and it gives you what a good growth light range is, what a minimum requirement is. So that's the very minimum your plant needs to just survive. So it won't thrive. The growth rate might be a lot slower. And it also lets you know the amount of direct sunlight that that plant should be getting per day. It's a great, great tool that I suggest that you use. It also has its references here for each species of plant. Um, so you can actually go in and do a, a deeper dive and understand exactly what your plant requirements are. So for example, if we just scroll through and just look at some of our more popular house plants, we have the alocasia, for example, a very popular one. The minimum light requirement for an alocasia, it suggests 200 foot candles. And for good growth, that's optimum growth rate, you're looking at about a 400 foot candle light range with three to four hours of direct sunlight exposure. For your anthuriums, they're sort of in the middle between that lower light and that medium light range. The minimum that they require to survive is about 100 foot candles and optimum is 400. Now, the thing about anthuriums, it, it's, it's, so, it's such a vast and varied species um, and some require more than others. So you find that your velvet leaf anthuriums uh, sort of like this mad rag over here behind me uh, requires just slightly less. So that one might, you might get away with that lower light range just because of the structure of the leaf. The reason why is, is velvety. It just helps to um, direct the light in the right places. Those plants can do slightly better in lower light. Not that you want to give it only low light. Your begonia is similar to your anthuriums. Minimum light range is 200 foot candles. And optimum is 400. Your calatheas are the same. And then you start getting down to sort of your philodendron as well. Those can survive in that sort of low light range. Um, a minimum of 50 foot candles that some websites suggest. Uh, this one, however, suggests about 100 foot candles minimum um, and 200 optimum. So you, so you really want to shop around and make sure that your plants are getting the right amount of light. Now, this is a great place to start. It has most of the popular houseplants here. I'll definitely suggest that you check out houseplantjournals.com, um, which will be linked in the description below for your use. It's something that I'm going to be using a lot more going forward. The next tool I'm going to suggest you use in order to make sure that your plants are getting the suggested amount of light is a light reader app. Now, there's so many on the market, so you choose whichever was right for you. The one that I use is completely free of charge, so I didn't pay anything for it. However, there are some that you can pay for, or you can buy a dedicated light reader from Amazon. So with that in mind, I'm gonna take you back here and show you my plant collection and show you how much light each plant gets when my grow lights are back in place and not being used as my studio lights. So with my plant light back in place, which is this one over here, you can see exactly how I supplement the light that my plant receives. This is an east facing window. So sort of after 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, the light is literally um, approaching the lower end of the spectrum. And a lot of these plants require a lot more of that light. So I find it best to supplement with it up here. The app that I'm using is called Lux and it tells you exactly how much light your plant is getting. So you can see, just make sure, there you go. So closer to the light, you can see that we're hitting about that 1,200, 1,300 lumens of light. So plenty of light there for your plants. If I go back here and I look at this philodendron bilati, so this leaf is receiving 300 uh, foot candles of light. That one over here is receiving 100, there about 120. So you can just tell like a distance which is only about a, a 20 centimeters apart can drop quite significantly from one to the other. So you need to make sure that your plant is getting the right amount of light. So here we go, my Pastazanum is getting about 150 over here. And this one, which is getting mostly that sunlight is about 80. So yeah, a bit lower than we than we'd hope, but it is a really, really cloudy day today. But that is literally the lower end of the scale, which is why this plant sits here closer to this wall. Over here with my Thai constellation, that's receiving plenty of light. It could actually do it for less. That's about 700 odd. My uh, VCI is receiving, there you go, about 500, just, just 450. They're about, and over there, 200. So you can even tell, so down here is my Spirits of Sancti, has its own dedicated light. And that's receiving, because it's a lower quality light also, 
a uh, hundred and sixty odd, which is okay for a philodendron now. Just want to make sure the light doesn't reflect. So about one hundred and eighty lumens of light. The Anthurium Madrag, about three hundred as well. So this is a great tool just to see and test exactly how much light your plant is receiving. So there you have it, two great tools to help you on your plant journey. Thank you so much for watching and as always, keep planting.